And officially, you know that it is 33 days to the 2024 general elections. General elections because it's a composition of the presidential elections and then the parliamentary elections. We are your election command center. And as always, we will also want to preface this by telling you that as part of the comprehensive and wide coverage we've been giving to you, including a number of the editions of Community Manifesto, where we have traveled far and wide, and also sought the views of ordinary voters like you and I, we know and trust that we are in a position to say that 33 days to this general election, we are the best platform for you to get up to the minute updates on everything, elections, news, current affairs in relation to this massive event. And for all that, please make sure you touch base with that. TV3 Ghana always available. We also have our various subsidiaries as well. 3FM, they're also on social media. 3news.com brings you the latest updates. And also just as the countdown continues, 33 days to that main event, we want to also start this big conversation by telling you that 3news.gh uh, is on Instagram. Uh, Three News is also available throughout. So make sure you follow us across our social media handles and let us get to know what you think about our programming, not only regular but also towards the election. But as always, before we introduce our guest, we also have to tell you that for all the money spent, you need to replenish it. I particularly did love the mega cash out jackpot on Friday. <laughs> Well, we had uh, over six winners, each of them taking home thousands, thousands. We started with 2K, 3K, and then also we had 5,000, and subsequently going on to 10,000, and each of those winners across the various regions of our country, happy. So this time, begin the week well, while we do a mega jackpot on Friday, please be part of this great conversation. And uh, choose option two and increase the number of tickets. And as always, you could be one of the lucky winners this morning and let us have some great conversations thereof. For those who have joined us, we're grateful that make sure that star 439 hash become your short code of choice. <laughs> A number of you have joined us. Rauf Mohammed has joined us. Nana Kwesi Ayimedu, good morning to you. We're grateful that you've joined us. Money, me, money, Joseph. Um, Ivan Sebin Samba, Kwesi Mensa, always joining us from the United States of America. And for those who are joining us from other areas mm -hmm. as well, because we love you, we always want to know that uh, we're also Prince Henry. Good morning to you as well. Our guest this morning, Kofi Ameyal. Kofi Amea, good morning just, to you. I just came in. Let me relax. Nobody more, knows that you just came in. That's uh... Ooh, let me relax. Okay, more. okay. How are you? I'm, I'm awesome. How okay. are you? I'm it's well been a too. while. I'm well too. I'm and I remember show. when um, Kofi came from the United Ooh. States of America. I was there with Joy News. <laughs> <coughs> and, um, you know, we um, linked up quite. We had some great uh, yeah, friendship. Yes. yes. And do. he's a very respectable gentleman, I have to insist, <laughs> compared to some of his compatriots. Mm. We think that oh, we, yeah, I mean, yes, we, we are, they are enemies, but we're not. And then, Edwiji Tamaklu, good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Good morning to my brother. All right. And a man have come to respect so much, Solomon Owusu. I kept asking, when he was in the MPP, why wasn't he communicating the policies of the government? But uh, he is with the Movement for Change <coughs> and the Alliance. They have uh, Alan Tramantin as their flag bearer and um, the butterfly man. Solomon, Bro, also, how are you? Good I'm morning. very well. I'm very All right. well. He's a serial entrepreneur and also has attached politics to it as well. Mm -hmm. So he speaks his mind as he wishes. But there's a man that we want to pay homage to. We'll start with it. So I don't have my money. Analytically, you will not buy. I am a pensioner. And all my money, I must confess, I'm, I know I'm on air. The money that I saved to take care of my pension time has been taken over by the banking cleanup. So I don't have my money. To support such a wonderful book. 
And if I tell how much that I saved for over 30 years to care, take care of my position now, you weep for me. And I get nervous. How at my age to pick it as Minister of Finance? Because the legitimate money that I made has been taken over and I'm not being paid. Meanwhile, it's gone to Parliament within the budget that they are paying us. They have been paid. About 800 of my people have died. Others have got stroke. And when we meet, we see a lot of our people in wheelchairs. Is that what the government wants us to be? Is that what you want me to be? My right hand side of my mind told me that save, continue to save towards the future. Now, I cannot even afford 1,000 CDs to buy this wonderful book. I'm the chairman, so I'm forced to buy it. How do I buy it? <laughs> so before coming here, I went to SNET. And you know what the digitalization is doing to us? At 70, at your birthday, if you don't come to uh, confirm or validate your existence through the bio, the computer will stop paying you. Meanwhile, I'm a 3rd January 1950 born. 3rd January. So January has passed, February has passed, they've stopped paying my, my pension. So, Prof, I had to rush to Senate office today to tell them that I'm still alive. Oh. <laughs> so they said, okay, put your left four fingers there, five of your four fingers of your right, you are the thumb, and they said, now you are through. You will be paid. And how much is it? And I'm prepared to cough out of this little pension, 3,000 cities to this book. I think I, I need a better round of applause. I used to be a showboy as well, oh. <laughs> but now I'm down. But in spite of all these, I will tell you that it's a good book. So if nothing at all, please cough 200 CDs. I don't know, Adrian, how much will it cost in the bookshop, this book? Give me a copy. And that is Dr. Michael Ejekumado, known uh, to me as a young journalist as Kama. And I remember his conference room at the Kama Group of Companies, which was just uh, around where we had Palace Biscuits at the time, uh, if you're from Dankwa Circle, heading towards uh, La, so to speak. Um, that was where many of the conferences in the early 2000s or from 2000, you'll find the conferences being convened. And uh, I remember he wrote a motivational book about how we need to <coughs> invest in government instruments and, you know, some of those things that everybody died to me at the time. I was a young man, died to me. Uh, Pastor Mensah Otabe was with, uh, also writing on his transformational leadership series. I remember Albert Okran, and he was part of that crop of people as young men who educated that we have to invest. Well, we're paying him homage. He passed on at the age of 74, and uh, before he passed on, he had an honorary doctorate degree with a King USD, and then acquired his own PhD with the University of Ghana, and so deservedly, Dr. Michael Ejekumado, rest in peace. That said, it's quite interesting, because our, our issue today we want to discuss foremostly is about what will be the benchmarks that you as an ordinary voter will look at before you make a choice for who becomes your president and the member of parliament for, for you. So more importantly, let's look at what the latest Afrobarometer is indicating. The most important problems for Ghanaians in 2024, and the respondents were asked some of these critical questions. Now, 41% of Ghanaians say unemployment is key. 38% say infrastructure 
health, education continues, and the management of the economy. And then subsequently, we have increasing cost of living. So if you look at one, two, three, four, five, six items by way of the benchmarks, they all relate to the economy. But water supply, farming is also a key issue. Now let's subsequently also uh, move ahead and you'll find that there were various people who also um, were asked some of these questions. So they, they thought that um, they, they, they followed in that bracket as well. And so for the first policy priority, they, they looked at unemployment, health, and the infrastructure itself uh, for this year. And then in the 2022, it was the management of the economy. Remember in 2022, that was when we had, we had the 54% um, uh, the, the inflationary rate that we had uh, within that period, and the dollar just ballooned subsequently. And then we had unemployment, infrastructure, et cetera. Now let's go up again, uh, I think two more steps. Uh, no, the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one next one the next one so you find that the age groups of the people uh, mainly were the young people okay so you find that the respondents mainly were 18 to 25 26 to 30 35 years and then 36 to 45 years very critical and these are the issues that they want. Now, let's go to this one. So it, so it was not all doom and gloom because the policies of the current government are very important to Ghanaians. And so 85% of Ghanaians say that free SHS has to be retained. And then subsequently will mean that it has to be either retained the way they are or improved upon. Planting or rearing for food and jobs, 81%. And that's a good thing. So free schooling, and then agriculture, and then industrialization, one district, one factory. 71% say they want this to be maintained. And then when it comes to irrigation, one village, one dam, 60%. And of course, we have 17% uh, uh, who are in favor of electronic uh, transaction levy. So it means 79% of the respondents say they don't agree. <coughs> To the e levy. What, as a viewer, are your key benchmarks as you're watching us that you'll be using to vote? And why? All right. Now, uh, let me start with you, um, Kofi uh, Ameyao. You, you, you've taken cognizance of these, and I know that even yesterday, Dr. Mahmoud Obama held. Uh, is there a youth connect, mm -hmm. a youth uh, interaction <clears throat> countrywide? I'm told 2,000 people were seated in the auditorium, and then even virtually we had more who people. Who said 2,000 people? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I mean, I'm talking who about, said? I'm oh, I, that was what I heard in the news. I also monitored as well, but I didn't, uh, but I heard in the news. So. Did you see 2,000 people? I saw, I saw a lot of the crowd. I saw, to be truthful. <laughs> who, who joined virtually as well? Uh, I should be right on that, across the country. Okay. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, based on your own interactions with Ghanaians, are the key issues that they want you to take a look <coughs> at going into this election? All right. Thank you very much, Roland, and a very good morning to you and to my um, good friends here. Um, please allow me to wish a very special person, a friend, a happy birthday, um, Frida, a former student of Pentecost University and Universal Secondary School. Frida. Uh, Frida Ando, um, happy birthday to you. May Frida God Ando. continue to bless you. And, Pentecost and, and, University. Oh. <laughs> because you Roland never wish anybody. Dave. This is the first time yeah, I wish That's why I say she's special. That's what I'm talking uh, about. You, uh, Pentecost University College. Today being her birthday, I wish uh, that God will grant her all her aspirations. And then the rest of her many lives will be filled with prosperity, joy. And then a lot of happiness. But having said Fidando, that, Fidando, you're lucky. Having said that, Roland, um, I think that uh, the CDD report or the Afrobarometer report truly reflects what Ghanaians are expecting going into the 2024 elections. I, I have gone through it many times, and uh, you asked the question that what are my personal observations as far as my interaction with Ghanaians are concerned. Not just Ghanaians here in, in Ghana, but Ghanaians also abroad. And broadly, these are the concerns that they are expressing. And when you look at the issues, 
I think all the system key important problems that have been itemized there, you know, more or less directly or indirectly affects the economy, whether it's water supply or corruption or electricity, one way or the other, they affect the economy. But the overwhelming majority are talking about unemployment. And that is why yesterday it was extremely important because when you look at the demographics, you realize that a lot of the young people are those who are asking for jobs, creation of jobs, especially from the angle of the government. And that is why it was extremely important that the uh, vice president of the republic, the flag bearer and the leader of the new patriotic party, will once again re-engage because um, you realize that um, whilst on his regional tours, he also does these uh, youth connect as well. So he has been engaging with the youth. But yesterday it was extremely important that he remind them of three important things. In fact, four. One, that this government has demonstrated a lot of commitment as far as its policies, programs are concerned, which are geared towards making sure it creates jobs directly or indirectly for them. And two, to also remind them that he, His Excellency the Vice President, has a demonstrable record as far as being a Vice President is concerned because um, when you look at the history of the Fourth Republic since 1992, he has been the most active and most efficient Vice President we've ever had. And his record is there for us to see. And he has championed over 30 programs. Um, and when you read paragraph 60 of his statement at UPSC on February 7, 2024, uh, he, he indicated and revealed to us what mandate was given to him by His Excellency Nanadu Dankwe Kufuadu. And that mandate was to formalize the economy. And that he has done efficiently, and all Ghanaians attest to that. I'm talking about the mobile money interoperability, the paperless system at the ports, and all the other digital things that you can, you can think of. So for me, uh, it was extremely important. And then the third important thing was to remind them that all, the alternative is dangerous that his opponent, or uh, uh, the former president, uh, uh, President John Dramani Mahama, uh, is not somebody they can rely on as far as provision of employment is concerned because uh, his record indicates that when the youth of this country once again were looking for jobs sometime in 2012 when he was going to become the, uh, the, the president of this republic, at the time he was even the caretaker president and he had been the vice president before. He told them he was in a position to provide them with jobs. Uh, fast forward to 2024, yet again when Ghanaian youth are asking for um, some form of uh, jobs and something that will really form and shape their future in a better way, he has proposed that uh, he will bring unexplained 24-hour economy policy, among other things, will be to go to the nightclubs 24 hours, and also to provide them with Nkuko Buon Kitin Kitin and Nkuko Kitin Kitin. So there was the need for the Vice President to tell the youth of this country that they can rely on him because he provides the solutions that takes care of their well-being and their future. So when you look at the Afro Barometers report and what the Vice President did yesterday, it's clearly an indication that he has the bold solutions to ensure that he will be able to address the unemployment situation. In as much as we have provided 2.6 million jobs, there are a lot that needs to be done. And he's committed to that because he has the, the, the competence and the skill. And when you look at the second most important thing that the good people of this country are looking up to, we are talking about infrastructure and roads. And in the history of this country, if there's any government that has provided more roads then it is Nanadu Dankwe Kufadu Baumia's government. We are talking about 12,830 kilometers of road that has been asphalted, overlaid, rehabilitated, and all that. When we are talking about bridges, this government has done more than any government in the Fourth Republic. I'm talking about infrastructure. In every sector of the economy that demands and requires infrastructure, this government has done more and better than the uh, government of the NDC, especially Mills Mahama and uh, Mahama Parkwisi Misata. So clearly, when you look at the critical issue, then you come to health. In the area of health, or the health ecosystem, you realize that this government has built more hospitals than any government in the Fourth Republic. We are not, uh, not just about 
hospitals that were, were, were left abandoned, but those that were started from the scratch and have been completed. We are talking about the Vamed or the Eurojet projects. Nine of them that were abandoned, six have been completed as we speak now. The Sense Lens in the Dunkirk Kufadu has completed over 20 hospitals. We are not talking about even the Agenda 111. Very soon, I'm told that about 30 will be commissioned before the end of the year. We are talking about the drone system. That is, that, that is, that, that is something we haven't seen before. That provides essential drugs to our rural areas for those who really need you know, those drugs when you know, they, are, they are faced with one form of emergency or the other. So clearly, when you look at the problems and the challenges facing the good people of this country, you would identify that this government had made provisions and continue to make provisions to address these challenges. But what we are saying is that there are a lot that need to be done. And His Excellency, the Vice President, is committed to consolidate on this game and ensure that he brings his vision and priority. And these visions and priorities are the ones that will continue to ensure that at the end of the day, we all admit as a people and as a government, but economically, we are not in a better place. <clears throat> okay? So a lot of things need to be retweaked and tweaked. And that is why he's coming with his tax policies. When you talk about making sure the youth participate in the fourth industrial revolution, he's there to give it to them. We are talking about making sure he makes the uh, business environment or, uh, uh, you know, friendly. His tax policy is there to address all these challenges. So for me, it is clear that when you look at the challenges, the government and the political party and the individual that can be able to address these challenges as enumerated or identified by the, the, the people of this country is His Excellency, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And I am clear in my mind, I'm certain from day one when he was elected at the flag bearer that this is the man to take us into the better future. Um, the, 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 was it last week? I saw that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia went to MIM and then uh, inaugurated the polyclinic there. Is, is it part of the Agenda 111 project? Uh, no. You are not too no, sure? I'm okay. not too sure. Uh, how many of the Agenda 111 uh, projects have been completed so far? There are I, I, 111. I don't. I have the figures here, but if you permit, maybe later I can later come can. back to. Right. But I know. We can come back on it. If I you know can. by the close of um, maybe next month. Mm. I know the date, but I'm not sure. Next exactly. month is uh, 30, December. Wait, wait, wait. No, next month. No, actually this month. Actually this month. Okay. Uh, so by the close of November. Uh, yeah, uh, about 30 will be commissioned. Okay, uh, so some have been commissioned, but I mean proper let, let commission. Me, let me write will be it done. down. Just write it. 30 down. Mm -hmm. agenda. Will be done. So. Uh, we are doing a lot in these areas that, for me, uh, have been... Like close of November? Yes. That, that, that's what I've been told. Like Yesterday I was told November. by my, 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 my colleague. So, Kofi Ameo. <laughs> so uh, uh, Roland, I mean, the, 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 the fact is that... Please if, wrap up for me. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, the fact is that if there's any government, really and truly, mm. that do have the, the, the policies and programs to address these challenges by Ghanaians, Indeed, is the MPP government. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Nana Dakun said I should tell you to list the hospitals you have built. Nana, Nana oh, That's Dakun. easy. Uh, so, so you say you get, you get it. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so, if, if you look at these benchmarks, how would you say that the, you do a proper assessment? The economy, you look at health, the infrastructure, and issues of unemployment have been dealt well adequately, for which perhaps uh, John Mahama is not even needed at all and that we need a continuation of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Okay, so I, I uh, once again, good morning. I want to start my discussion by reading a post by Gabi Asari Otredakun on Facebook, dated October 31st, 2016. What's the post? Let me and see whether it's a legitimate one. Oh, please do. Okay. He says, quote, the NDC is campaigning on infrastructure, and this is what a university don't say about it. The economy is number one, the economy is number two, the economy is number three, because when we have a better economy, all other sectors perform well. Building a hospital is very good thing, but that is not how it is done. If you have existing hospitals and you lack doctors, your doctors are going on strike. You do not have enough medicine. Don't go and build another hospital. Listen to Gabriel. Then he said, you have to ensure that the existing ones perform, f function properly. That is the detail Muhammad fails to give. Today, 
What's your point with this? The point I am making is that the economy, the economy, the economy. Now, the question every household is asking, what's it to say? Simple. And this morning, you have shown the video of the respected Dr. Michael Hadou. I was only paying homage I to beg you, I beg you, passed. I beg you. I didn't... I beg you, please. You have shown his video, and the more I watch it, I became heartbroken. Akufuado and Bamiya took this man to his early grave. Painfully. You cannot conclude. Please, that. please, 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 I beg you. The man out there is not a young man to lie. The man out there has no interest lying. He's above 70, 74 years. The man says that over 30 years of my life savings, Akufado and Baumia, through a dubious DDP, have denied him access to that savings. Look, when we were in Lagos, Dr. Michael Ado, um, um, there to me, and Co. used to come to Tingis, John Scotty building, and encourage us to save in most of these banks and most of these financial institutions. What have we seen? We woke up one morning, Akufado told us that there shall be no haircuts. Lied to us. I've never seen a leader People trusted him and decided that he would be deceiving and lying to his people than what we have seen today. Over 61 billion Ghana cities of people's interest payment and principal payment lost through the DDP like a military regime. For the first time, we saw a retired chief justice go on demonstration. You come and sit here and gaslight people. You come and sit here and make it look like you have done us a favor. You come and sit here and look Ghanaians in the face and tell them that you have built hospital. Are you serious? When COVID struck, when COVID came to this country, where were they keeping the people? Were they keeping them in Akufado's cathedral? When COVID came, and that if you want to assess the What's vision, point, please, please, if you want to assess the vision of a leader, you will see what he does in good time. Four years, what were you doing? You were putting $58 million into a bottomless hole for eight years and for four years. Today, that hole is the most useless thing ever done. Instead of apologizing to Ghana, you are sitting here saying you have done what better. Yesterday, did Bamiya tell Ghana why he and Akufado decided to put $58 million? No cities into a hole. Did he tell them that 58 million dollars? Uh, 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 do you know the number of jobs it can create to young people of this country? You use 58 million dollars in digging a hole. Are you mad? Are you crazy? And Ghanaians are going through this pain for eight years. Be careful with your No, no, no. You see, you see, no, no, no. Listen, listen, hold on. No, no, no. You, no, no, no. you, no, no. you see, I am in pain this morning. But, but no, no, no. the fact no, no. that you are in pain that's I want, I want, I want to. No, please. I want to. Oh, please. No, no, no. Kofi, Kofi, No, but you see, Kofi, 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 Please don't be saying crazy and mad. It's either your flag bearer or it's you. Come on, don't do that. It is the height of madness. To use fifty-eight million dollars to dig a hole. <laughs> your words, your words. No, is it not madness? Fifty-eight million, Roland. If fifty-eight million dollars is Akufado's hard-earned money, would he use it to dig a hole? Would he do that? Look, the pain in the hearts of Ghanaians does not require us to romanticize issues. I would not do it. I was only saying speak with Jack. People. Ah, if you dig a hole with $58 million, would your sanity not be questioned? A hole. And, 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 and Roland, I beg your pardon. Listen, you have a situation where this government decided that they were going to use $2 million on a sky train. That money is locked up with a company, no sky train. $2 million. Can Bamiya tell Ghanaians how many jobs 
Oh, I thought it was for feasibility. But that's it. Feasibility. Yes, and where's the money? Where's the sky tree? It's gone under the tree. We are told that this government spent another two million dollars. Motor angel for the motorway job. It never happened. Do you know how many jobs that two million can create? Swami. Chedia, is it? Chedia. Chedia. Yeah, Drobonso. Uh, we have Manson Quanta. We have Meme. I saw Meme last week. Uh, Terrible rules. Terrible rules. Meme. Terrible but, but they have hospital. Terrible rules. <laughs> All right, so they watch Chuck Money is always available for you. Make sure that you use a short code. You get to win 20 times your stake, 40 times your stake, and then 400 times your stake. And... Um, Oh. There was and then election. just in case you want to get um, all the interaction, you can no, also no, no, do no. online dewa-nla.com, get the latest update, and you get all the draws. Roland, it's 10 a.m. this morning. We have uh, 6 p.m. and then 7 a.m. also, election. 7 p.m. as well. Where? The understanding is that it's not coming. The peace. Yeah. Yeah.